Hi team! Last month we churned out some steampunk looks for the family. This project was to be worn at the Stroudsburg Rail Museum in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. They have multiple train car options for 45 minute rides, costumes are totally fine, and we were able to leave the house to hang out with some friends for their private event. The construction videos for this project aren't terribly exciting since I mostly follow the pattern instructions. So instead of a bunch of time lapses, I'll just talk you through the outfits in a few photos. Admittedly, I don't have a ton of detailed shots since I was in a rush to pull everything together, and when we got to the event, we were having too much fun to think about documentation. But I'll do my best to run down the list of pieces, and I'll show you the updated version of my ensemble in a quick backyard catwalk at the end. When choosing outfits for a themed event, I find it incredibly useful to pick a specific year related to the venue and or the activities in which we may choose to engage, in this case, riding on a train. I knew that I wanted to wear a bustle, so I started with 1885 based upon some fashion plates on Pinterest, then I let truly Victorian patterns and the Victorian dressmaker books guide me through the rest. The kids were allowed to design their own looks and to do a bit of supervised online shopping. Henchubby's clothes came primarily from his modern wardrobe. Then we added some purchased pieces and homemade accents. So we'll start with him. The base of the outfit is a pair of modern slim fit chinos, a white collared shirt, a brown pocketed vest, and a pair of dark colored dress shoes. I made a cravat from gold jacquard scraps for my Tudor gown and used a dark Starfleet pip as a tie pin. He has a gold pocket watch tucked away, which is secured with a small silver vintage brooch to keep the chain in place. I couldn't find my other watch chain, so I deconstructed an old necklace and fashioned a hook out of some jewelry wire. Hench Hubby's black coat and Cahill hat were purchased from Historical Emporium. Their Callahan frock coat seems to be a bestseller since we saw a few guests at the event wearing the same style. I added a strip of black velvet from an old skirt to the collar edge for a bit of visual texture. I do have plans to change out the buttons, but that is a future me project. There's nothing wrong with the buttons, I just want to customize the coat a bit for any future outings. Hubby's look was finished with a lapel pin made from antique cotton scraps that I ordered on Etsy and some small metal gears that I purchased from a craft store. Our eldest requested an ensemble that they put together in the game Love Nikki. Due to the time crunch that we were under, I was only able to finish the base elements of the design. However, I'll post their catwalk of the final look in a future video. What I did get done was absolutely adorable and mostly stash busted. I started with Simplicity 1558, which has a short sleeved blouse with a neck ruffle. I used the rest of my Burnley and Trowbridge satin striped cotton from the chemise gown, and I was able to add another ruffle down the center front with scraps. The sleeves were lengthened to about the elbow based upon the amount of fabric that I had left over. I then used linen scraps to lengthen the sleeves to the wrist. To mimic a yoke, I stitched a length of lace around the neckline. The shirt is buttoned at the collar and I'm a little obsessed with it. The cream bow at the opening is from that antique cotton scrap purchase and they also got a handmade lapel pin as an accent. The trousers are Simplicity 8114 in a brown pin tucked poly taffeta. The bustled overskirt is from an old Westworld dance costume of mine. I tacked the apron front to the back for a bit of floof and added waist ties with decorative gears. The belt is from my closet and will be replaced with a Swiss waist for that future video. I'm just now noticing that they didn't wear the satin gaiters we found in my steampunk bin, but I'll need to make a better fitting pair with matching sleeve guards anyway. They are temporarily wearing cut off sweater sleeves over the forearm. The lace-up boots are from Target. Topping off this look is a tapered tall hat from my costume stash and a pair of motorcycle goggles. Their favorite part of the look is the Totoro pocket watch around the neck, which was a recent birthday gift. Our youngest wanted to embrace the fantasy with some grease stains and dirt smudges, but I talked him down with a pair of fancy new goggles and a pocket watch. I also let him borrow my velvet hat purchased years ago at a steampunk event. We tried out museum replicas for his outfit. Their Edison vest, knee pants, and Hyde Street shirt leave a decent amount of room for growth, and the construction is acceptable. Unfortunately, all three pieces are labeled dry clean only, which is absurd for children's garments. That said, if they disintegrate during cleaning, I'll have fabric scraps to stuff a new bum pad with. I did add a watch pocket to the vest that can be accessed from the inside and the outside. 
I slashed an opening big enough for the watch, made a pocket out of cotton twill, and bound the outer edge with a scrap of leather. He also has a lapel pin, and I parted with my telescope ring for the afternoon so that he could live his best little steampunk tinkerer life. My ensemble started with the underpinnings, as is only proper. The combinations are based off of the Victorian Dressmaker Volume 1 and can be seen in my Victorian Beach Day Storm video. The 1880s Victorian corset and bustle are from Red Threaded, and my shoes are from American Duchess. I had originally planned to wear my ivory Renoirs, but after consulting my fabric cord to pull this all together, I found that my burgundy and black camilles fit the color palette. The petticoat does not ever need to see the light of day. It's all melty piece lining fabrics and sadness with a little blue ruffle at the bottom. I need to make a pretty petticoat to hide last month's sins, but that's another future me project. For the visible bits, I was guided by a too small length of stripy fabric that I was just barely able to piece into truly Victorian pattern 261, the foregore underskirt. I've been holding on to this gorgeous remnant for years with no clue how to use it, but the fall colors spoke to me while I was knee deep in stash fabric. Thank goodness I'm short. I have plans to add a brown silk taffeta pleated ruffle to the hem using my leftovers from the short sack petticoat. However, that will require a pleating board, and we know that future me already has a long list. TV374, the bordered asymmetrical overskirt, took me far too long to understand, and I ended up just tacking the fabric into the waistband willy-nilly to get it done. If anyone knows of a good tutorial for this piece, please let me know in the comments. I used more of that gold jacquard from my recent Tudor gown and added a wide maroon velvet ribbon from the stash. The Alexandra Bodice TV-466 only took one mock-up and was pretty easy to put together. I had exactly enough brown twill for a version with shortened sleeves, more of the gold jacquard to coordinate with the overskirt, and some red cotton velvet for the lapel, cuffs, and back facing. The antique brass buttons came from Etsy, and I only managed to get them sewn up to my bust line before we had to get to the event. The headgear that day was a situation, as always. I loosely lined an old straw hat with some gathered crushed poly taffeta. I tacked on thin velvet ribbon for a hat band, added some feather bunches, more of those antique cotton scraps, a random flower, and I made a hat pin with gears to complete the transition from mostly Victorian to steampunk. For the train ride and reception, everyone's looks fit the bill beautifully. We were all very comfortable, there were no food-based disasters, and the kids absolutely now have the steampunk bug. After we got home and I had a week to decompress from the October sewing binge, I finished adding my bodice buttons, changed out some accessories, and headed to the backyard for a little turn. Here, as you can see, my hair has been tucked under the black velvet hat with the same hat band and feather bunch from the previous weekend. I've also added red lensed specks, black leather gloves, and my cream parasol for some contrast and protection from the fall weather happening in my area. My earrings are a simple old favorite from the craft bin, and I'm wearing a circular brooch that has a yellow-orange gemstone inside of a broom to fasten the collar. I am delighted at how well this ensemble came together, and with my recent studio change, you can expect more stash busting to whittle down what I have. Thanks for hanging out!